Hi hey everyone, welcome back to Rick's 135th Scout Models. My name is Rick. Today I'm excited, I finally got my amusing hobby KF-51. Now, I've been looking forward to this kit. I just got it the other day and I wanted to talk about it and then right after I finish this video, I'm starting the build and I'm gonna show that process and then the painting process after that. But, let's quickly talk about the kit. Now, I'm using hobbies. It's the first time I've built this kit. I, after looking at it, am impressed with it. It's a nice kit. It's a pretty straightforward kit. There aren't a lot of parts, but the KF-51 doesn't have a lot of the exterior things like you see on the normal vehicles with all the hand guards and handrails and different things like that. It's a lot more sleek prototype version. Now it actually is in existence. They have built it. Um, I've been doing some reading and research and I've seen that uh, Ryan Metal is actually reaching out to different countries to start building a factory to assemble this vehicle, which is pretty exciting. Now, the first thing I did notice on it is the turret is huge. Now, that's because it has a 130 millimeter gun on it, um, which is obviously substantially larger than a 120. The big, biggest advantage to that weapon is it's a lot faster round, so when they fire it, it goes farther range uh, at a faster speed and gets to the target quicker and that's as I've read one of the biggest advantages to it And obviously it has a harder hit because it's a bigger round um, The other thing is because the round is so much larger larger. It has an auto loader now the vehicle itself has multiple options um, The prototype that this model is based on is the one that has the four uh anti-tank drones that are a, a lingering type drone that flies around that launches out of uh, the tube right behind what would have been a traditional leopard loader position um, and then it also has four other drones that are more of an observation drone that can fly up out of the top of the turret fly around and uh, do different surveillance things now the vehicle as I said is an auto loader so it has uh, a different setup inside and what Rheinmetall did is they took a Leopard 4 um, and then after looking at the model I can see how it's definitely a Leopard 4 version because for example the driver's hatch isn't the slide it's the type that uh, pivots around and opens and then where the extra rounds were carried in the lower hull that's an actual crew member position they, they put in there the driver sits obviously where I said in the traditional position the commander goes from sitting behind the gunner to where the loader position was and if you look online there's some great pictures of these different interior positions and all the technology now it has cameras all over it it has sensors all over it it's very much more advanced technological vehicle um, and it's like I said they have made its prototypes and they're looking for buyers and things like that but uh, there's some great pictures online. Now when I looked at the online pictures compared to the model, uh, it's pretty accurate. Um, the only issue I will say that was kind of upsetting is it has no decals. Um, it doesn't have the uh, Ryan Metal uh, decals that go on the front and the rear, the KF-51 that they have. Um, decal none of that's there so that's kind of um, sad but they do have some masking material to do their digital paint scheme that they have which was nice to see and it actually looks like it's a pretty simple straightforward process um, which when I get to the paint process we'll get, be able to experience that together but as I said the model itself is pretty accurate it looks nice there are a couple of little small issues um, that I've seen um, and then uh, one of my friends has already built the kit uh, he got it and built it in like two days um, so I kind of picked up a lot what he was saying in the building process which I will also talk about but let's jump into the model and look at the parts okay let's start working through the instructions now you initially have the same box art in the front you have some basic information here and nothing major and then you go into the instructions you have a list of your parts and then you start dealing the lower hull um, you'll see here they've got some modifications cutting and drilling things like that uh, nothing overly major pretty straightforward you start the process here now they do not have the uh, little vinyl uh, parts you put inside the world wheels to make them on and off possible but they do have where you glue on this cap which will make them rotate if you want um, 
always a little bit of a challenge but uh, still okay going to the track assembly they have the proper number of tracks of 84 lengths on each side they also have the road wheel staggered uh, the axles when you look at the actual vehicle they don't sit straight across on both sides they're slightly offset and that's accurately done and then you go into the assembly of the top of the lower hull uh, as I said before not a lot of major parts pretty uh, sleek vehicle itself so this is pretty simple uh, you do have the clear glass for some of the parts and different things like that uh, assembling through then you go from there into the turret assembly uh, all the parts that go in there do have some PE sheets here's one of the drones uh, that you can assemble the barrel itself which is in multiple sections uh, then you step into building the, all the uh, parts that go on top of the turret all this like I said is pretty straightforward you do have some uh, uh, resin parts that are cast and some modifications to some of the equipment one of the things I was told was that there's a uh, issue here with the positioning of the uh, roof machine gun it's a little farther back so when you're assembling that check that and make sure that you put it in the right position you may have to modify this hole down here a little bit to move it for a little slightly f more forward uh, the other issue that was noted was that the lower hull, the two sections when they go together, there's a gap in there. Once you put the side skirts on, you can't see it, but it is there and it's something you may want to cover up. Um, it doesn't really affect the quality. It's kind of a personal preference thing. And then on the back side, <clears throat> you have the final stage of adding everything in, putting it together. One of the... Uh, drones you can build one um, as a display model uh, you can also because the way they have this set up you can have drones um, coming out of the tube like in the actual uh, displayed version at the trade shows and then they also have the drones that pop out of these two locations one of them is on a clear tube popping up as if it just was launched um, it does not have antennas but it has the mount so you can uh, either leave these without anything or put a wire in there or a, a stretched spruce sheet whichever you prefer um, but that's pretty straightforward as I said there's really no decals um, on the front and the back there's um, the manufacturer and then the uh, vehicle model number on both parts and that's not here so that's the only part that really was uh, they kind of dropped the ball for whatever reason but that's the instructions now they have two this sheet which is two-sided which has your different paint schemes and then your colors you have to paint uh, this is one paint style and then they have this other style here um, so it's a, not such an intense camel masking and as you can see on this side it's a lot thicker masking with the stencils they have this sheet of paper attached in there which is the thinner masking technique uh, pretty good pictures of all the sides and then on the back they have a map of how you lay it out and what it looks like here would be your masks you've got your two sides your front your rear your turret different parts there uh, as you can see they're pretty uh, small digital cuts but once they're laid out it definitely should gives you some really nice results uh, it'll take more time putting them on than painting but like I said, it saves a lot of time, so it's a, a neat idea they put in there. Looking at the styrene sheets, the spruce sheets, uh, really nice quality. There's no flashing. Uh, the way they've connected all the parts is minimal and in good locations. Um, all the parts are real clean. You don't have any divots. There are a couple of places where you have the... Uh, little round hole on the inside um, a couple of them you'll be visible so you have to fill but nothing major uh, the barrel is here it's a slide mold um, which you know you obviously comes in from the side you got the front the back and then the slide comes in and that gives you that nice design real thin parts pretty uh, nice plastic as I said the turret is here comes in two parts uh, pretty straightforward you have really nice non skid here uh, you have all the little bolts all these points the different anchorings and styles uh, really well done the uh, joints there are a couple places here where you can do some modifications like back here there's a uh, handle you could uh, 
replace that. That would dress up a little bit on the side. Same thing. You've got two handles here and here, um, which would be nice if you uh, kind of clean those up, cut them off, and uh, put plastic ones are or uh, cut the center out so it's a little cleaner. Um, but uh, pretty straightforward. The fit's great on these. No issues whatsoever. Not a lot of cleanup. Looking at the two sides, once again you have all the bolt pattern for the uh, axle mounts. And a lot of these parts are already installed. Uh, you do have to put the shocks, uh, struts, things like that in. Some parts to cut off. But uh, real clean, nice. The welds look real sharp. Um, definitely a good job. The top of the lower hull, um, the non-skid here is a little thicker than I would prefer, nothing major, um, but it's uh, definitely uh, higher up than the turret itself. But you have all the other parts look really nice, uh, real nice casting along with your uh, driver's hatch there. So it went real clean. Here's some other parts you might want if you want to modify it. Cut these off and put the little handles on for the uh, fuel points. Uh, here, here, and here. And then a little bit of sanding there, but a lot of this is covered up with your side skirts. So There's nothing major. For the road wheels and parts of the axles, you have three of these sheets. Um, you have the uh, pretty thin. Um, they looked a little odd to me when I first looked at them, but after looking at the actual vehicle, these are correct. There's no stenciling on the inside. There's no markings. There's no manufacturer information on the insides of the road wheels. Um, so uh, they're correct, and they, they definitely have this little bit of a different looking bevel. I mean, it may be visual, but it just looks different than a standard Leopard uh, road wheel. Um, I could be wrong, but... Uh, these look identical to the pictures of the actual vehicle, so that's a really nice job. You have one of the antenna springs here, really uh, well made. The uh, recovery and tow hooks here are uh, really good scale, nicely done, along with these um, shocks that go on the uh, axles to prevent it from over uh, moving upward. Uh, they're really well done also, along with your drive sprockets and your return wheels. All really good quality. Uh, nice job on this. Here's more parts of the hull. You have the lower hull here, the connection points for the motor. Um, one of the things that you'll see here is this does not have any plating. Um, this uh, On a standard Leopard, the M versions, they have added a plating for mines here. This vehicle doesn't have it. The prototype doesn't have it either, nor does it have the three reinforcement brackets on the back of the motor underneath here. It's not here on the prototype, and the model doesn't have it either, so they did a good job of making that accurate. Um, you've got all the venting back here for the exhaust system. Some of these hatches are all really well made. Uh, these actually look just like the real one. They, they kind of look more cast here, but when you look at the real one, that's what they look like. So it's a really nice job there. On the insides of the hatches, they do have some of the uh, parts there. So that if you wanted the hatch open, there's no interior though. But they do add that detail, so I don't know if that's a planned future thing or just how they did it. But I found that interesting. Now this sheet's a little different. You have your standard... Uh, road wheel section but they have this section in addition to it so this is a fourth set of road wheels but it's different because you have the back end here some more of these parts your uh, return uh, road wheel parts there and then the back now what's nice is this isn't real thick for the fenders and mud flaps so that's a pretty good job there they did uh, I like it you have your caps there more parts of your barrel like on the other ones now you're gonna have four of these sheets which are for your uh, tracks obviously they do provide quite a few extra sections mine has several damaged if you start looking around but um, this has 38 uh, sections on it and there's a total of five of these so I definitely will have more than I need I only need 168 to do the uh, actual vehicle so I have plenty of extra parts during the assembly process now it has this little jig um, I've seen that on other models I personally don't like it I just assemble them by hand um, these are your kind of your pop in and you have to glue them and they're a little crazy but if you take your time it works out fine it's just one of those sit down watch TV and 
knock out a few of them at a time. But the quality itself of the tracks is nice. Uh, they look good. There's no damage, so if you want them to have them damaged, you have to take some sandpaper or do something to that. Um, but this is a lot better setup than your rubber band tracks. Now they have this sheet, which is just a, a decal set that's all black. Now this is for your black uh, sections. You, you cut it to fit and then uh, put it on if you wanted to do that or paint it. And this is an interesting idea. A little different. It works. Here's uh, the only PE sheet is uh, some small parts and then your uh, rotors for your drones are here. Um, and then you have your clear plastic which has your periscopes and your sights and your headlights and taillights here. Now they're LED so they've got some small little lines to paint. A little challenging but that uh, gives great results when it's done. The last thing is this nice little box they give you which has your 3D resin design parts. You've got your link belt for your ammunition. You have the top part of the uh, gun that sits on the roof and then the smoke launchers. Now, there are two different versions of this I've seen with two different smoke launchers. This is the one that they show at the trade shows, which has these type. I've also seen pictures that has the more traditional German uh, style smoke launchers that are probably twice this big and they have the cap that pops off with the chain and all that. I have seen pictures of that. But this is the prototype version, um, which is shown here. They don't give you the option to do the other one, but this is how the kit comes. And then, uh, like I said, these are all resin. It's really good quality design parts. Very impressed there. And then they give you a nice little box with it to protect it. Uh, kind of interesting. So that's the kit. Uh, like I said, it's a nice kit. It looks to be a fun build, a very straightforward build. All the parts look like they're really well designed and fit together great. Uh, you have the uh, tracks, uh, not the rubber band style, the ones you have to assemble. Probably the most tedious process in the whole kit, uh, but should give great results when done. Um, like I said, I'm now going to start the build and then uh, here in a few days you'll see another video on the build process. But Thank you for watching. Comments, questions, always welcome. Please subscribe. Please like. Uh, get me on Facebook. Uh, you can ask questions there or in the blog for this thing. I'll always try and get back to you. Uh, if I'm doing something great, hit the like button. If I'm doing something you don't like, please tell me what you're doing, what you don't like, so I can correct it or at least uh, work through the process. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Now I'm going to start building a model.